Hello and welcome to the next lecture video in theory of computation. In this lecture video, we will study about another model of finite automata that is non-deterministic finite automata NFE. NFE is also a mathematical model of automatic machines in which the control is non-deterministic. Here, the control is non-deterministic means the movement of NFE is not fixed. That is, reading an input symbol from the particular state, NFE can move to 0, 1 or more than 1 state. Let us suppose NFE is in the state Q0, reading an input symbol A from Q0 state may lead to the state Q1 or may lead to the state Q2 or may lead to the state Q3 or lead to the other state 2 and also may not lead to any state so phi. That is no transition or movement is defined for input A at a state Q0. So there are too many alternatives in the case of NFE. But in the case of DFA, reading an input symbol from the particular state, DFA can move only to one fixed state. Let us suppose the DFA is in the state Q0, reading an input symbol A in Q0 state always leads to one fixed state, let's say Q1. So there is no choice for an input A in the case of DFA, that is no alternatives in the case of DFA. Remember that while constructing a DFA, you have to define every possible transitions. But in the case of NFA, you may leave some transitions that are not required. Differences and similarities between DFA and NFA. In DFA, the control is deterministic, which means the movement of DFA is fixed, that is, have no alternatives. Whereas in the case of NFA, the control is non-deterministic. That means movement is not fixed. That is, have multiple choices or alternatives on reading the input. Second, DFA cannot be more than one state at a time. But the NFA can be more than one state at a time. Third, while constructing a DFA, you should define all the possible transitions. Whereas in the case of NFA, you may leave some unwanted transitions. DFA is hard to design as compared to NFA. NFA is easy to design as compared to DFA. Now talking about the similarities of these two models, the language acceptability power of these two models that is DFA and NFA are same. That means if we can construct a DFA for a language L then we can also construct its equivalent NFA. That is there are no any languages for which we can construct a DFA but can construct its equivalent NFA. Similarly there are no any languages for which we can construct NFA but can construct its equivalent DFA. Now let's define NFA formally. Formal definition of NFA. A NFA denoted by N consists of five tuples N equals to Q sigma delta Q naught comma F where Q denotes the set of states sigma denotes alphabet that is the set of symbols. Delta denotes transition function that takes state and alphabet as input and produce zero or more state as a output. So we can say subset of Q as a output. Similarly, Q0 is the initial state of NFA or we say the starting state. And finally, F denotes set of accepting states. Note the only difference between DFA and NFA is in the type of transition function. In NFA, delta is a function that takes a state and input symbol as an argument and returns 0, 1 or more state as an output. 
but in the case of DFA exactly only one state is returned as output now let's understand the formal definition of NFA by taking an example this is the state diagram for NFA since there are two choices to move from the state Q0 after reading the symbol 0 that is Q0 itself and another is Q3 similarly there are two options to move from Q0 state on encountering the symbol 0 and also there is no movement or transition defined on the state Q1 for the input alphabet 0 now let's see the five tuple of this NFA first Q as Q denotes the set of states therefore Q equals to Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 and another component is Sigma which equals to input symbol therefore 0 comma 1 and the third component Delta is given as Delta of Q0 comma 0 equals to Q0 itself and another option is Q3 similarly Delta of Q0 comma 1 equals to Q0 and another option is Q1 similarly Delta of Q1 comma 0 equals to Phi as there is no transition defined on input symbol 0 in the state Q1 similarly Delta of Q1 comma 1 equals to Q2 and finally Delta of Q4 comma 1 equals to Q4 similarly the next component is Q0 that denotes the starting state and in this state diagram the starting state is also Q0 finally the last component is F that denotes the set of accepting states and in this state diagram the accepting state is Q4 now these are the five tuples for this state diagram let's study another topic of NFA how NFA processes a string here we study about how to determine whether a particular string is accepted or rejected by a NFA it is very useful while determining the language of NFA so let's start whenever the string is given to NFA it processes a string as follows first NFA starts with the starting state let's say Q0 it then reads the symbol of the string one by one and switches to the set of states which may include 0 1 or more states according to the transition function third finally after reading the last symbol of the string if the set of states that NFA switches after reading the last symbol of the string contains at least one accepting state of the NFA then that string is considered as accepted otherwise considered as rejected now let's understand this by taking an example of NFA consider an NFA now let us suppose we have to determine whether the string 100 is accepted or rejected by this NFA for this the NFA processes this string as follows initially the machine is in the starting state that is Q0 now reading this first symbol that is 0 in Q0 reaches to the state either Q0 or Q3 since there are two alternatives on reading the symbol 0 in Q0 state now the machine reads the symbol 1 in both Q0 and Q3 state that means reading 1 in Q0 leads to the state Q0 or may leads to the state Q1 and reading 1 in Q3 state does not have any transitions 
therefore this path dies now the machine reads the third symbol that is this zero in q0 and q1 state so reading zero in q0 state either leads to the state q0 or q3 similarly reading zero in q1 state does not have transitions therefore this path also dies now the machine reads this last symbol in q0 and q3 state so reading 0 in q0 state either leads to the state q0 or q3 similarly reading the symbol 0 in q3 state leads to the state q4 finally after reading the string 0 1 0 0 from the state q0 the machine may reach to the states q0 or maybe in q3 or maybe in q4 since this set contains one accepting state that is q4 therefore this string is accepted by our nfa let's take another string 0 1 0 1 in this case initially the machine is in the starting state q0 now reading the first symbol that is 0 in q0 state may leads to the state q0 or may leads to the state q3 now the machine reads the next one symbol in both q0 and q3 state so reading the symbol 1 in q0 state either leads to the state q0 or may leads to the state q1 similarly reading the symbol 1 in q3 state does not have any transition therefore this path dies now the machine reads the next symbol that is this zero in both q0 and q1 state so reading zero in q0 state may either leads to the state q0 or q3 similarly reading zero in q1 state does not have any transition so this path dies now the machine reads the final symbol that is this one in q0 and q3 state so reading one in q0 state either leads to the state q0 or may leads to the state q1 similarly reading one in q3 state does not have any transition therefore dies as we see after reading the string 0 1 0 1 from q0 state the machine finally reaches to the states either q0 or q1 since this set does not contains accepting states therefore this string is rejected by our nfa this is the informal way of determining whether the particular string is accepted or rejected by the nfa formally we can determine by using the extended transition function of nfa which we will study in next topic extended transition function of nfa the extended transition function of nfa denoted by delta cap takes two argument as a input that is a state and second a string w and returns a set of states as a output this set may either contain 0 1 or more states it can be written as delta cap of q comma w equals to let's say q1 q2 q3 or so on so this delta cap defines where the machine goes after reading the string w from q state it may be either in q1 or maybe in q2 or maybe in q3 and other two simply we can say that this delta cap which is the extended transition function of nfa 
defines where the machine goes after reading the whole string w in particular string let's say q now let's define the extended transition function of nfe by using induction definition by induction which is very useful while determining whether the particular string is accepted or rejected by the nfe first basis step basis step says that delta cap of q comma epsilon equals to q that means reading no input symbol in particular state remains to the same state now inductive step let w be the string belongs to sigma star having form such that w equals to x a where a is the last symbol of w and x is the substring of w for example if w equals to 0 1 0 0 1 then this segment is x and this last symbol is a and also let delta cap of q comma x equals to p1 p2 p3 so on up to pk and union of i equals to 1 to k delta of pi comma a equals to r1 r2 r3 so on up to rm then delta of q comma w equals to r1 r2 r3 so on up to r this inductive step tries to say that to compute the value of delta cap of q comma w we have to first compute delta cap of q comma x which is p1 p2 so on to pk then reading the symbol a in each these states which leads to the state r1 r2 so on rm so delta cap of q comma w equals to delta cap of q comma x a which is equals to this consider an example compute the value of delta cap of q0 comma 0 1 1 0 1 we will compute the value of this by using the inductive definition of extended transition function to compute the value of this we first compute delta cap of q0 comma 0 1 0 and from those states we then finally read this last symbol 1 that means delta cap of q0 comma 0 1 1 0 1 equals to delta of delta cap of q0 comma 0 1 1 0 this is x and this last symbol 1 is a which is equals to delta of delta of delta cap of q0 comma this is now x and this is a so 0 1 1 comma 0 comma 1 equals to delta of delta of delta of delta cap of q naught comma here this is x and this is a so 0 1 comma 1 comma 0 comma 1 equals to delta of delta of delta of delta of delta cap of q naught comma 0 comma this one comma this one comma this 0 comma this one which is equals to delta of delta of delta of delta of delta of delta cap of q naught comma here we can write epsilon so this epsilon work as x and this as a so q naught comma epsilon comma this zero and this one comma this one comma this zero comma this one which is equals to delta of delta of delta of delta of delta of now the value of this 
q0 comma epsilon is q0 by using basis step so 0 this 0 comma 1 comma 1 comma 0 comma 1 equals to delta of delta of of delta of now delta of q0 comma 0 is either q0 or q1 2 comma 1 comma 1 comma 0 comma 1 equals to delta of delta of delta of now this indicates we have to read the symbol 1 in both q0 and q1 state so reading 1 in q0 state remains in the same state q0 and reading 1 in q1 state leads to the state q2 comma this one comma 0 comma 1 equals to delta of delta of now this indicates reading the symbol 1 in both q0 and q2 state therefore reading 1 in q0 state remains in the same state q0 and reading 1 in q2 state does not have any transition therefore phi so q0 union phi equals to q0 only comma 0 comma 1 which is equals to delta of so reading 0 in q0 state leads to the state either q0 or q1 comma 1 equals to now this means reading the symbol 1 in both q0 and q1 state so reading 1 in q0 state remains in this state q0 similarly reading 1 in q1 state leads to the state q2 here this set includes one accepting state that is q2 therefore the string 0 1 1 0 1 is accepted by this nfa let's see one another method to compute the value of this for this you have to put epsilon here now first compute the value of delta cap of q not comma this first epsilon by using basis step which gives q not by using basis step now compute delta cap of q0 comma this 0 which is equals to read this 0 in q0 states so we can write delta of q0 comma 0 which is equals to q0 comma q1 then delta of q0 comma 0 and the second symbol 1 which is equals to now read this one in both these state so we can write delta of q0 comma 1 union delta of q1 comma 1 which is equals to reading 1 in q0 state gives q0 union reading 1 in q1 state gives q2 so q0 comma q2 then delta of q0 comma 0 1 and this one which is equals to now read this one in both q0 and q2 state so we can write delta of q0 comma 1 union delta of q2 comma 1 which is equals to reading 1 in q0 state gives q0 union reading 1 in q2 state does not have any transition therefore phi which is equals to q0 next delta of q0 comma 0 1 1 and next symbol this 0 which is equals to now read this 0 in this q0 state so we write delta of 
q0 comma 0 which is equals to q0 comma q1 and then delta of q0 comma 0 1 1 0 and the final symbol 1 equals to now read this final one in both these two states so we can write delta of q0 comma 1 union delta of q0 comma 1 which is equals to q0 union q2 which is equals to q0 comma q2 as after reading the final symbol the NFA may reaches to the state either q0 or q2 and this set includes q2 which is accepting state therefore this string is accepted by this NFA. You can use any of one method to compute the value of these type of expressions. Now try to compute the value of delta cap of q0 comma 0 1 1 1 0 0 yourself. Language of NFA. The language of NFA is a set of all strings that are accepted by that NFA. Formally, the language of NFA n equals to q sigma delta q naught comma f denoted by l of n is set of strings w such that delta cap of q naught comma w intersection with final state not equals to phi that is l of n is a set of all strings w in sigma star such that delta cap of q naught comma w contains at least one accepting state that's all in this lecture video if you have any queries then please leave the comment and thank you for watching this video